testimony of some Jews is predicting him or not. We believe in Jesus, so let's get with it. You know? Same about John. And you see, John is writing in a later time, and he is using less prophecies or quotations from the Old Testament than Matthew, considering that John is Jewish. Second coming uh, should be tied in into something in the past as well, because Jewish people need to see the connection. Why Jesus came? What is the second coming? How is it all played out in the Old Testament? That's the way I think. Allusions to the Old Testament. Matthew makes 76 allusions, not illusions. Allusions. <laughs> Mark makes 27, Luke 42, and John makes 105. Although he quotes only 20 quotations, he makes a lot of allusions to the Old Testament. That's where that question is answered. He is referring to some Old Testament imagery, pointing out Revelation imagery. So, and apparently Jewish person, when they would read the book of Revelation, they would have more understanding of the symbology <coughs> Because symbols are coming from the ancient times, from such uh, literature as Mishnah, uh, which is kind of like a commentary to the Torah and the Old Testament. A lot of Midrash, which is also a commentary by the Rabbis. Kabbalah, which is a mysticism, which is based on symbology and sequences of physical texts interpreted by numerology and all those pseudosciences. Okay, unique material. Matthew contains 42% of the unique material. Mark, 59. Luke, 7%. And John, 92. Which means Luke is pretty much right on the money. He's talking about Jesus. It's all history. Uh, John is not preoccupied with history. He's preoccupied with Understanding of Jesus' nature. That, that's what the first uh, churches were preoccupied with. First heresies were preoccupied with that. First wars of Christians were preoccupied with the nature of Christ. Whether he was fully human, fully spiritual. Uh, did, did he have a double nature? Did he have one nature which was half spiritual, half human? How do you understand that? Those are the questions that were raised in the first three centuries by Christians. Uh, if we look at the broad vision, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are more of a synoptic gospel. The word synoptic means looking together, meaning they're looking together at the same picture or the same historical data and interpreting it with their own words uh, based on their own experiences their own background, their own audiences, uh, and whatever other agenda they pursue. John is kind of on the side of the Synoptic Gospels. He is doing his own thing. He's trying to do a unique presentation of Jesus as God, uh, who is a supreme spiritual being, elevated above any other deity, probably seeing in people that have read the Gospels that they are not really touched with the persona of Jesus because there's not too much meat around him. He has teaching, but a lot of us even now read <coughs> parables and we don't understand because they're culturally distant from us. We are not agrarian society for the most part of it. We are not fishermen. We are not farmers. So we don't understand allegories or parables that Jesus is using in his ministry. Uh, 
Yes. I had a question about that. Are there some good resources to acquire that information? Life at the cost, parables of Jesus Christ. J J Life and the Cost. Does that deal with a lot of the um, the cultural um, customs and as no, well? Or? For the culture for cultures and customs, um, Gower manners and customs of the biblical world. Nelson's Encyclopedia of Culture, of Biblical Culture, or something like that, it's green. There is a there's a whole DVD series by Fulkerson Family, yeah, Ray Vanderlyn. That's what, very good. What's it called? It's called uh, Faith Lessons. They just came out with two new ones, I think, for the New Testament. So I haven't seen those, but I've seen the other six. And they're very good. They're extremely good. Who, who wrote the Anderson Customs of the Biblical World? Ralph Gower. That's the first book, basic book about biblical customs with some illustrations and some illustrations. I actually picked up yesterday, no, Monday, at the library, Reader's Digest. The people of people and customs of the New Testament. And it, it is really good. I've read about a third of it uh, on Monday after class on Tuesday. It's very captivating, captivating material and a lot of illustrations uh, and historically true information. There's also probably by Doyle Kindersley Publishing House, there's uh, like a family Bible which has a lot of illustrations and explanations of different cultures and manners. Bible Dictionary, I think. It's cool. It has a lot of information. Or Rebel. R-E-B-E-L-L. -L. Yes. So, Revelation was written when in the first and second gospel? In the first and second gospel? Uh, first gospel was probably written around 45. Sixties, fifties, between the fifties and seventies. Uh, John's letters are written between sixties and seventies. First, second, third. Month. Revelation is written around eighties and nineties. So close to the end. So all these gospels were written around the same time. More or less so. All the Pauline letters were written first. So the church was basically its beliefs of the Pauline letters before they got Mark. Although Mark was probably close to Galatians, so it's close to the beginning. Matthew was quite late. Luke was quite late. So John assume that he didn't even look or have read the, the Q source because his writings are so different or he's working with Yeah, he's just, he's just not following those kind of sayings and statements. It's, 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 uh, it's not that he didn't have the Q source in this because the, you know, his uh, sources of writing, he just chose to have 
how different spin on things. And some uh, liberal theologians, they're suggesting that John is not the author of the book of, of the book of Revelation because it has so much uh, newer flavor than the first century AD. They, they attribute that to about second or third century because so much uh, atrocities have gone on in the church, there are wars waged over doctrines, people killing people, judging, you know. So and somebody perhaps just wrote this horrible book to scare people off from going to different heresies and following different sects. So it's one of the versions. Do uh, the liberal scholars mostly go to hell? I think they're all going to hell. <laughs> no, mostly. Liberal theologians must be in the worst. You know, there is a, there's probably no liberal theologians in the world anymore. They're all calling themselves postmodern, which is a big difference. It means that if they are atheists, they would have to say at the beginning of their book that I am an atheist. Or they would say, oh, I am a Baptist, so my perspective might be different, and I might not be covering it from all the perspectives that people expect me to. Uh, this is my predisposition. This is my problem. I'm gonna. So if you're interested, come on, go ahead and read it. In the, in the past, people would try to pass their ideas without identifying themselves. So that you would read the book, but you never know until the end of the book what they really believe in. So it is really good because it's not wasting people's time. If it says, you know, this is literature for gay, lesbian, uh, feminist movement, you know, it's like, I'm probably not going to be. It's called Castrating the God the Father by Mary Daly. I probably won't be interested in that. Uh, I have to write a report on that. As a NIV. What? Today's, new today's, today's NIV. Uh -huh. that, that's a good one for feminists. I mean, it, it there's makes the a, Bible more accessible. Uh, there's the one that the liberals use the most. It's a uh, Oxford Study Bible. It's gender inclusive uh, and politically correct. <laughs> the thing in some of the in some of the it actually says God the Mother. <coughs> Serious? Yeah. <laughs> but um, man and woman were both created in the of God, right? So man, probably. I'm not sure about it. The total, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was created out of the second hand material. <laughs> yes, the only one not made of dirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job. Hey, dirt was pure before what do you the fall. Know? <laughs> dirt was sanctified before the fall. <laughs> but she was perfected more than yep. salvaged human body of Adam. Are you missing any uh, ribs? the right nourishment. She says, what is man? He was asleep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Application. What can we do with the gospel? Uh, in this <laughs> we can preach from it, right? But how do we preach from the gospel? Do we speak about the same truth that uh, Jesus was telling to the Jews to prepare the way for the kingdom of God? Do we pray that preach about the kingdom being at hand? Or are we saying something else? And what are we saying? Okay, well let's see how uh, different perspectives uh, Oh, okay, alright. Well, that's what's going on. I wasn't sure. There are various humble